<laughs> What's up, modern steaders? Today I'm going to share with you the top seven things I wish I knew before the first time I brought home our piglet. The first one is right here, these cattle panels. These are cattle panels, not hog panels. Our store didn't have hog panels when we went and bought these at the local supply store. And what the difference is, is these squares are bigger right here on a hog panel. They're more this size. So in our piglets, when we first got them, they were small enough. We put them down in here and whew, right through the hole they went. Luckily we caught them and we didn't have an issue. We put them back in and I turned the electric fence on and I put poultry netting on the outside and turned that on too. So once they got bigger, this fence was more than handy enough to keep them in. So the first one is make sure you have hog panels and not cattle panel or your pen is small enough holes in between the gaps so your piglets can't get through. You might think they're pretty big, but they can dart through and get through some pretty small openings. The other one, I wish we had an automatic pig waterer. Pigs drink a lot of water and they like to play in it. So we used to have a rubber bowl. We'd put, fill it up with about five gallons of water. They'd drink out of it. Five, ten minutes later, you'd look over. They're playing in it. They got their nose under it and they're flipping it over, dumping it out. If you have a bigger pool, like a little kid's pool or a trough like that, they're going to drink out of it, then they're going to go roll in it and lie in it, make a mess, go to the bathroom in it. You're just constantly cleaning and lugging water. So we got this 55 gallon food grade drum with a water nipple on it. I'll go ahead and I'll link the video right here showing you how we made it. I fill it up with water once a week and it lasts all week. It probably lasts a month for our two pigs most of the time, but I like to make sure the water is fresh so I fill it up every week. One that I just learned this year from our pig farmer that we're going to be getting our piglets from is if you raise your pigs on pasture, you can feed them 16% feed. You don't need to give them pig feed. The only difference is, is pig feed has vitamins and minerals, which the pigs need if they're raised inside in a barn and they don't have access to dirt and grass. If they have access to the dirt and the grass, they're going to be getting the vitamins and the minerals they need from that. He also said their manure smells better because they don't have all the excess vitamins and minerals in the manure. So that should be a win-win. Biggest reason for it is, other than the smell, is you're going to save between a dollar and two dollars on a bag of feed because they have to add the vitamins and minerals to it so it costs more money. On average you're going to be feeding a pig around 20 bags of feed so if you're going to be saving anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks per pig. That's some pretty good savings you can keep in your pocket. Last year we found out that our local feed store has a customer appreciation day and they'll take off two dollars per bag of grain. You can buy as much as you want. To take advantage of it we went and we bought a whole ton of grain and that's enough to finish out our two pigs. You're gonna need 20 bags per pig so that's 40 bags and you get 40 bags to a ton. So if your local feed store doesn't do a customer appreciation day they might do a bulk buy discount and if you can go ahead and buy as many bags as you're going to need to finish your pig. You're going to need at least 20 bags of grain per pig so you can figure it out that way. You're going to want to make sure you have good flat access to your gate. When you go to load them up into the trailer, if you're taking them to a butcher shop, if you have to come up an incline like we did, you get more of a hill and the pigs don't like to step up, but if you make a ramp it's slippery and it takes a lot longer to load your pig. When you're planning the layout of your pig pen, keep in mind that you're going to need to load these pigs up to take them to the butcher shop when they're grown. And then make sure you have a good, solid, rugged gate that's a physical barrier for a pig. If you have an electric fence for a gate, that's a mental barrier for a pig. And when you take that fence down, they're still not gonna wanna cross that opening. If you have a physical gate, you open it up and they're more apt to walk right out of it for you. When you get your piglets, try to figure out how fast they're gonna grow and kind of have in mind when you plan on bringing them to the butcher. We got ours in April last year, so we were able to bring them to the butcher come September. We'll be getting them in May this year, so we'll be bringing them in October, what might be a little bit more of a hassle for us, because a lot of the butchers up here are going to be cutting up wild game, so they're going to be busy. So I'm going to have to make sure I call the butcher in advance and set up butchering dates, so that way I know I can get my pigs butchered when they're ready. I don't want to have to feed them extra feed and be putting on more fat on the pig. When you're paying a butcher to harvest and butcher the meat for you, you're paying by hanging weight. So that goes by how much fat is on the pig too. You don't get to eat that fat, so it's a lot of waste of money. 
it's wasted money you're paying to the butcher for the weight and it's a waste of feed because they're not putting on as much meat. I hope these tips were helpful. If you have any other questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And I'd love to hear some mistakes you made the first time you raised some pigs on your property. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Share the video, it really helps. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you right back here next time at Lumna Acres.